Good morning, Cedar Crest. It's Tuesday, May 28th. I'm Feeman. And I'm Eric Wozniak. Coming up, the boys and girls track and field team had, started, had standout performances at States. We'll tell you who. Also, when does public art go too far? We talked to one of the last remaining residents of Centralia about the graffiti highway. We'll be right back with this and your school news. In class news, any student signed up to take AP U.S. History next year, please see Mr. Risser in room 112 to pick up your summer reading assignment. Students signed up to take AP European History, Western Civilizations II, or AP Human Geography, please stop by Dr. Zaria's room in room 108 to pick up your summer reading assignment before finals start. In club news, students taking AP Literature next year, there will be a meeting in Mrs. Opresco's room 806 on Wednesday until 3 p.m. to discuss summer work and expectations. Class of 2022, if you have not paid your class dues yet, please get your $25 into Mr. Harris in room 804. Next year, dues will increase to $30, so pay them now. Public art can unite and inspire communities, but when is it considered vandalism? In 1962, a one-mile stretch of, of Route 61 north of Lebanon was closed when a vein of coal burning underneath Centralia. Pennsylvania damaged the surface of the road. Residents of the town were forced to move and only seven remain. However, thousands of tourists visit the highway each year to view the graffiti that has overtaken the highway. Correspondents Ian Morley, Maddie Doxtater, Megan Carpenter, and Philip Patches talked to one of the last resi residences of the town about whether the graffiti is art or crime. In Centralia, Pennsylvania, two and a half hours northwest of Philadelphia, an abandoned stretch of road lays covered in 25 years' worth of graffiti. I think it's a way for people to kind of like leave their mark, and then there's like people's names and like hashtags and stuff. This is Graffiti Highway the most famous and one of the last landmarks in the once bustling mining town. Centralia sits on 25 million tons of coal. In 1962, one of the mining beds just southeast of the town caught fire. That underground fire is still burning today. Eventually, all the real estate was claimed by eminent domain and condemned. The last seven residents who refused to leave are allowed to live out their lives in the town. Harold Mervine is one of those residents. This was my grandparents home initially, so I'm, I'm third generation in this house. People today have no concept of home. This whole thing was quite a fiasco. It, it tore families and friends apart because some people wanted to stay and some people wanted to leave, and uh, it just created a lot of bitterness and, like I said, broke up families and friends. Heat from the fire also broke up a strip of old State Route 61, opening cracks and weakening its structural integrity. And despite no trespassing warnings, thousands of people travel the graffiti highway each year to view and to contribute to the colorful layers of paint. I think it's a good way for people to like express themselves without, I guess, truly vandalizing something like more public. But is the graffiti art or vandalism? Residents and tourists disagree. I have no problem with people coming and walking around, but well, I got the graffiti highway is getting filled up, and now. Now they come into town and they think they can do the same thing on the streets and just about anything that holds still. It's vandalism. You can't do that in your own town or, or around your area. There's no reason why you should be able to do it here. The Diempolis family traveled to Centralia from Connecticut. We came for a road trip and this was one of the spots that we wanted to stop at. I think it's art. I like it. It's not bad. I mean, there's a lot of stuff and... People have been coming here forever, and it's a cool place to stop. I think, like, without this road now, I think people would forget that there's a fire actually burning underneath the road. <laughs> um, and it gives people a reason to come back so often and check out all, like, the different art and stuff that's on the road. For those who still live in Centralia, Graffiti Road is an eyesore not worth the attention it receives. I don't know how you can call it art. If you go down there and look at that highway, it's just paint on top of paint on top of paint. If there was anything any artistic or beautiful about it, it's been covered up. 
I, mean, I, I don't get it. Why people drive hundreds of miles to come to see paint on a road. That's just boggles my mind. Under Centralia, the mine fire continues to burn and could for another 250 years. And as long as people flock to the asphalt tourist attraction, the controversy around Graffiti Highway will remain heated. For PBS NewsHour Student Reporting Labs, I'm Ian Morley in Centralia, Pennsylvania. The underground coal fire was accidentally started in 1962 when the township burned trash to clean up for a Memorial Day celebration. The underground fire could burn for another 250 years. Now we send it over to Cole with your sports report. Thank you. Thanks guys. In sports news, Jack Marika and Dylan Tall finished their historic tennis season with a bronze medal at States on Saturday. They finished third in the PIAA doubles championship. This is the best finish for any doubles team in school history. Way to go boys. Both the boys and girls track and field teams had standout performances at the PIAA state track and field meet. The boys 4x800 relay team of Ryan Sigatano, William Sheffield, Jake Barrett and Nate Shutter placed fifth with a season best time. Senior Hannah Wolfling placed third in the discus at the PIAA state championship. Gwyneth Young set a new school record to place fourth in the two mile run. Her time also makes her the 28th fastest distance runner in the United States. Junior Shayla Bonzale set a new school record, set a new school record and finished sixth place in the 400. Girls soccer players that need to take their concussion test may take them at 245 and room 701. That's all for your sports news. Now back to the desk. That's all for your announcements today. I'm Feeman. And I'm Eric Rosiniak. Make it a great day, Cedar Crest.